What I am about to show you has to be one of the biggest coaching mistakes I've seen at the major league level ever. Here's the situation. And let me know if you think I'm wrong on this. It's a one run game. The bases are loaded. There is nobody out. Gilbert has been pitching an excellent game and coming up to the plate in this situation is a guy who is a known bunter. Okay. The guy is known part of his game is bunting. That's the scouting report. And if you don't believe me, here is Dave Sims on the broadcast. As this guy was coming up to the plate before anything happened, listen to this. Good bunter. Hey, aware. Okay. So even Dave Sims on the broadcast knows, hey, scouting report says this guy can bunt. Now that we know all of that, let me show you this. Look at how the infield is lined up for this guy. You have your first baseman way off the line, way out into the hole. And then your third baseman is not even close to where he needs to be on the grass to try to defend against a bunt here. And here's the thing, okay? It's been a while since I've had to really, really think about scenarios in like real by the book situations on how you would defend things. And the only thing I can think of of why you would set up this way is, hey, we want to get a ground ball. We want to turn two. We want to cover the holes. We want nothing to get through the infield. So we're going to play back and we're going to try to play for that ground ball and play for that double play, which, I mean, it makes sense. You got the bases loaded. You got the force out at every base. That makes sense, right? But the second, the second that you're in this situation and the guy coming up to the plate can bunt and is known for bunting and that's part of his game and you leave him an infield that looks like this in a one run game with no one out that's i don't care i there's no way that any statistic any number any money ball bull crap you can show me that this makes sense there's absolutely no way why is the infield set up like this? So here's the play. In case you didn't see it, let's just watch this through so you can see they got exactly what they asked for. Here you go. Good bunner. Hey, aware. There it is. I'm just trying to collect my thoughts here on why, why, just why. There it is. Why are you lined up? If even the guy in the broadcast booth knows that this is a possibility, why are you setting up your defense like this? Let me put it in perspective in case like you're new to baseball and like maybe I'm wrong on this and I'll look like a fool. If you were to compare it to basketball, this would be like, hey, it's late in the fourth quarter. It's a three-point game and we're playing the golden state warriors and you decide we're going to play a certain type of defense that leaves a corner three open for steph curry and we're just going to let him have it we're just going to let him shoot it <laughs> it's like what your game plan's wrong here so yes did logan gilbert absolutely botch this and throw it away and make a terrible play 100 percent. right that was ugly that's a terrible baseball play. But your job as the manager, at least as far as I've heard it, and I've heard it many times before, is to put your players in the best position to be successful. How many times have we heard that? Your job is to figure out what your guys are good at, put them in the best position to be successful around what they're good at against matchups and everything else. So all I'm trying to say is, as ugly as this was with the interference call at third base, and the terrible throw by the pitcher, everyone's scoring and it's a big disaster. This comes back on coaching. This is on Scott's service. Why are they set up like this? And leave a comment. If you think I'm wrong, if you think I'm totally out of my element here, I want you to comment and tell me, I want someone to just rationalize the thought process on that. Why would you have the defense set up that way? That's all I'm asking. And here's the last play that I'm gonna show. Another like, what are we doing bonehead mistake? You get a fly ball in foul territory and your first baseman and your catcher are going after it. And like we're in an 8U Little League baseball game, they're just 
letting it land between them, looking dumb in the face. I'm sure you guys already know this, but that is 100%, without a doubt, the first baseman's ball. If you're the first baseman and you can get to it, that's your ball. You need to call off the catcher. The catcher should not be the one that has to run his ass down the field to make this play. You got to be aggressive as a first baseman. He did just come up from AAA. Maybe we'll give him a little bit of a pass here, but I just wanted to also add this in because this was, this is embarrassing. The Mariners are playing embarrassing baseball now. It, it's gotten to a point where it, it's, it's truly, it's shameful. And Scott, his seat has never been hotter. This is the hottest Scott seat has ever been. And we might not see him by the end of this week. And I'm going to read every single comment you guys leave down here. If you think I'm wrong on this, please tell me. Also subscribe if you're interested in more baseball breakdowns. I do them all through the MLB season for better or for worse. And thank you guys. You've done an amazing job at that so far. I think we're around 1,500. I'm trying to get to 2,000 by the end of the year. So thank you guys. And I'll see you in my next video.